All right, in this video, we'll be looking at phylogenetic reconstruction, this idea of phylogeny and how we use diagrams in order to show it. Uh, just for a general idea of phylogeny, this is just an evolutionary history. It shows the diversification of a particular taxon. And so you could take any particular group and you could show how they have diversified over the years. This particular, this particular group shows... Um, carnivores and you can see the diversification happening here very splitting off at various points for various reasons and so that's what we're going to be looking at as we study this uh, going back here just a couple other words to, to note are the difference between homology actually let's talk about characters first uh, character is just a phenotypic component uh, used to evaluate um, phylogenetic relationships. It could be something simple like this is vertebra and this is bony skeleton and this is four limbs. See, these are all phenotypic components, things that you can see when you look at the organism. They are um, apparent, so it's an easy way to classify them and an easy way to see how those things have changed over time. Uh, there's two different ideas with this and this is the ideas of homology and homoplasy homology is a character um, sharing that results from common ancestry and so you can see here uh, homology is so this if this is the trait or this is the character it's shared all through home through the whole common ancestry shares it whereas homeoplasy is where a character um, is shared but doesn't necessarily come from common descent. So you have uh, wings on birds and wings on insects, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have a common descent. Whereas um, everything from this point forward, say, has a vertebra. And so they're all shared, share that trait. And that is like would be a homology. All right. And so uh, looking now at the difference between Ancestral versus derived characters. An ancestral character is a character that is shared by a broader group. And so um, that would be shared by all the, the organisms that you're looking at in a particular group. You know, if you go back to here, you know, this would be an ancestral character for all of these particular organisms versus a derived character, which a derived character is a characteristic that you're looking at only in the current taxon. And so if you were looking at mammals, for instance, the, own, the derived character would be hair, whereas an ancestral character for all of the ones that you see here would be a vertebral column, except for that one called the lancelet. Notice it's there um, and it doesn't share any of the characteristics with the other organisms. And that is why it's called the outgroup. The outgroup is commonly used as a basis of comparison um, so that you can compare it to the other things. Here's a picture of all vertebrates, except for the lancelet showing that it's kind of a it's not, doesn't belong. It's a way of just almost like the control of an experiment in a way. And, and one of the uh, things that you can, or one of the terms that you can use concerning for or concerning these different groups is a clade. And it's just a clade is an ancestral species and all of its descendants. And so you could pick anything to be a clade. And so if you have this ancestral species right here, that is the descendants of all reptiles and mammals, you could say this is my clade. Or if you wanted to do all vertebrates, you have a much bigger clade at that point. And so a clade is just a term for a particular group that you are studying. And that leads to this next term, which is cladistics. And cladistics is just the study of this breaking groups into clades. You can see some of the different ways you can do that just based on this picture. It's um, there's a lot of different ways to look at this. Here's a couple of these. I can move this over again. You can see that there is some that's called synapomorphy. And synapomorphy is when the derived character is shared by all the members of a particular clade that you're looking at. And so this derived trait would be uh, the black trait here. And synapomorphy is when all of those characteristics are shared by that trait. It arises from common ancestry. So an example would be that all mammals have hair and mammillary glands. Reptiles, which may be out here on this um, branch, do not share that. And so that wouldn't be a synapomorphy. Whereas a plesiomorphy, which you can see here, 
shows um, that where the ancestral character is shared by the out group, meaning that the only thing that these two groups have in common is all the way down here at the bottom. And so a, a plesiomorphy, um, this this would be an example of reptiles and mammals. They have this, you know, if this is rept, if this is mammals and this is reptiles, they share this uh, ancestral trait as opposed to sharing a derived trait with one another. And this allows you to create things like cladograms, like you saw on this other picture back here, and phylogenetic trees, which is a more more broader look at things and gives you a better picture of time and uh, how time exists, because the longer those lines are, the more time has passed. But how are these things decided? There's a couple of ways these things are decided. Uh, one of them is comparative morphology. Uh, this is where organismal structures um, have similar, they look similar to one another, but they don't necessarily have a similar function. And so you can compare uh, the shape and size and structure of different um, pieces and it will show you their relation to one another there's also comparative embryology which is um, a form of comparative morphology you can see the different shapes of the embryos here and they can show you um, how things change over time even from the embryonic state there is comparative biochemistry which uh, looks at things like amino acids and looks at uh, DNA sequences. So here you can see this gene has is sequenced very similar, and there are some slight differences as you get out into the further regions, and there's going to be more similarities with things that are more closely related. Here shows the amino acid sequences in a hemoglobin molecule, same sort of thing. You could also talk about comparative cytology, which is just cells. Um, this has to do with not only cell shape and structure, but a lot of this has to do with like the numbers and shapes of the chromosomes that exist in that organism cells.